discussing the karmic debt number 14.5. Basically, the karmic number 14.5 indicates that you have a debt to pay in this lifetime for the actions performed in a former lifetime. When a karmic number shows up, it's telling you that you'll experience significant challenges with a particular topic in your life. It'll depend on where it lands in your chart as to what the overall effect might be. Understand also that your chart consists of many numbers and influences, so if you have the karmic 14.5, it will play a part in your overall personality, and yet it's not the only factors, so keep that in mind as we go along. So while this can be seen as an ugh, uh-oh, it's actually really good to know that the struggles you most likely experience can be given a name, and this information can offer more meaning and perspective around those issues. It's rather like having credit card debt. You have to decide to forego that vacation or buying that expensive car because instead you have to use that money to incrementally pay off or pay down your credit card. And if you don't pay it off, the debt keeps accumulating and consumes your life, the collection service starts calling, the repo man shows up, you know, you get the picture. So when you see a karmic debt number, it simply indicates that you have a debt to pay which is a, a, really a, translates into a particular lesson to learn. Luckily, knowing the nature of this debt you're paying is a bonus and a positive thing. When you can identify and name it, you can in some ways embrace it, take it seriously, and do something about it. If a 14.5 shows up as one of your core numbers, understand that you're now paying back for past abuses where you acted upon your personal and selfish sense of freedom. The 14.5 indicates that there's been a pretty hefty abuse of freedom through excessive behaviors and shunning personal responsibility. Remember that the number one in 14 always indicates selfishness. This is the common denominator for all of the karmic debt numbers. The 14.5 indicates that you're being asked to monitor and master the highest and best version of freedom through self-discipline. And you can understand that as acting upon a certain sense of moderation, mastering a high level of focus and follow-through, and reigning in self-indulgence. You're being asked to be that fearless and vivacious five who also follows through with commitments, keeps, keeps an organized calendar, and meets your responsibilities, even when you don't feel like it's the most fun thing to do at the time. And so now that you know this, and it, if it resonates with you, then now what? How do you deal with it? Or how do you understand what this brings to the table in your life? So I like to describe it this way. So you're now being asked to be the highest and best version of the positive characteristics of the number five, including being fun, fearless, adventurous, versatile, and sensual. Remember that the five is all about the exploration of freedom and experiencing all that this tactile and sensual side of life has to offer. So if you have the 14.5 as one of your core numbers, you'll most likely act upon the more destructive tendencies of the number five until the lessons have been understood, acknowledged, acted upon, and then mastered. The trick is that it won't be easy. You'll get a throwdown in the realm of the lessons of the number five, and you'll be called upon to really work it in a conscious and consistent manner. The path of the number five is often quite frenetic and, and can be marked by tendencies toward excess. The number five also offers challenges related to heightened levels of fear, self-indulgence, scattered focus, and restriction. This can manifest itself in all kinds of ways, yet when it's coupled with the 14, it's imperative that you understand that the bottom line is that you commit to engaging in practical and consistent actions that result in an expansive sense of freedom. And how do you do that, you may be asking, that sounds impossible. And yet it's not. This combination is actually the highest expression of the number five. The karmic 14.5 demands that you do the hard work, 
be reliable, and pay attention to the more practical, pragmatic aspects of life. And so you can look at it this way. You're mastering freedom, physical freedom, emotional freedom, financial freedom, spiritual freedom, and mental freedom. It takes concerted effort, for instance, to keep your physical body fit and healthy. Yet that is the way to gain physical freedom. You got to go to the gym, you got to work out, you got to be you got to, you know, take that seriously. You got to make time for it and you have to follow through with it. And that takes effort, focus, and commitment. It takes setting goals, some staying power, and drive to create the financial resources it takes to have financial freedom. It takes a commitment to the depth of experience and to self-knowledge in order to gain mental freedom and release, and release yourself from these shackles of emotional volatility. So see how that might work? It takes some mindful constraints and stick to itness to actually achieve the levels of freedom that you seek. So while it seems somewhat oxymoronic, it actually is what the highest level of the number five is all about. It's about the constructive use of freedom rather than that knee-jerk idea of freedom, which could be something like, I'm going to do whatever I want, however I want, whenever I want, right? So this attitude is more about escaping responsibility rather than forging an actual path to freedom. I've also found that when you're actually pursuing this information through numerology or other metaphysical tools, you've come to a point in your personal evolution where you've possibly been able to work through some of the turbulence related to the karmic number. I find people with the karmic numbers often express that they have always felt this strange internal compass or mechanism that heightens their sensitivity to traveling the straight and narrow. For instance, many who have the karmic 14.5 have told me that they've always felt this intense sense that they must be orderly, disciplined, and hardworking, and that this is a driving force in their lives. They feel added intensity around this ability to be responsible and reliable and to work hard and get things accomplished. And they're really aware of the adverse reaction they have and that they feel when they aren't being disciplined or aren't working to, to achieve a specific goal. Yet also in order to pay back the karmic debt, you need to step into the most powerful and positive qualities of the number five. And this doesn't happen overnight. This is a lifelong endeavor. Some of the traits that must be grappled with might include the following. Setbacks and disappointments. The number five is all about going with the flow of progressive change and finding freedom in your life. It's all about facing fears and experiencing the world as your oyster. And when you have the added energy of the karmic 14.5, you'll find more distinct hurdles that have to do with spiraling into the ultimate, you know, being that ultimate rolling stone that gathers no moss. So while it's your birthright to explore and experience, the 14 demands that you don't let things get out of control. Setting healthy parameters. Part of the overall challenge with the five is that you can experience more than your share of impulsiveness that you can find it extremely challenging to establish some longer-term goals and commit to healthy habits and routines. Often the 14.5 struggles with the inability to establish some structure and order in life that would allow the levels of freedom you're so driven to achieve. This can show up in all kinds of ways. You may have the revolving bedroom door where relationships are fleeting and destabilize your life. Perhaps you default into excess with drugs, alcohol, food, anything that allows you an escape hatch from responsibility. This can also show up as emotional volatility where your emotional landscape is so incredibly sensitive that it controls you and stands in the way of your need to deal with the practicalities of life. Or on the other end of the spectrum, you can struggle with the oppositional pull of the five and retreat with overriding fears, restrictive dependencies, or long-term emotional overwhelm and procrastination. Instability. The oppositional elements present themselves with great strength when you're working with the karmic 14. 
Therefore, you can be met with issues related to the opposite of your purpose. So rather than forging ahead with your vivacious and freedom-loving energy, you can succumb to heightened levels of emotional paralysis and an inability to create and embrace positive change. The lessons of the four that are inherent with the 14-5 produce lots of limitations and an additional need for the commitment to achieve whatever you set out to do. The issue here is that the 14-5 can experience a lot of shifting and changing circumstances. Unless you can embrace the changes and move forward productively, you can feel a heightened level of being trapped or stuck. One of the in intriguing things I found when working with karmic debt is this. Always remember that you're also being called upon to pay special attention to the elements of the number where your infraction is located. So for you, this is the number four in 14. And so what does that mean? It means that you'll also be asked to infuse some positive elements of the energy of the four into your five life path purpose. And this brings some interesting dynamics, of course, because the four is all about hard work, stability, security, and systematic thinking. These elements aren't always really congruent with the purpose of the five, which is much more freewheeling and tactile and, and prefers to live in the moment. Yet the karmic 14-5 blossoms and at, is, is really at its highest and best when you're also mindful about bringing the structure and the determination of the four into your freedom-loving and sensual five. So no one said it was going to be easy. And yet this dynamic holds amazing power when you understand what you're being called upon to do. Also understand that if this description just really doesn't sound anything like you or who you think you are, then potentially you're at a stage of development and maturity in your life and have been working diligently on your own personal growth where you're more in alignment with the constructive elements of the number five. And if that describes you, then hats off. You have been doing your work and it never hurts to give yourself a little pat on the back for a job well done. So the gift that you're given by knowing that you have a karmic debt to pay is this. Rather than feeling victimized, you can see that this is something that you brought on yourself despite the fact that you can't consciously remember it. Not in a shameful way, rather in a mindful way where you simply take responsibility for yourself. If you exert the energy and commitment to working in the positive realms of the number five, then you will reap the benefits. It's testing you and requiring that you rewire the way you work with fearlessness, adventure, sex, change, and self-discipline. The destructive path might feel more comfortable since you've been there, done that. And yet this time you're being asked to extract yourself from riding in that same rut in the road. You're required to create a new way of working with these themes that have positive and productive results for you and for everyone around you.